Hi, it is uh, Car Pack Carter. Car Pack Carter. That's what I'm going to call myself from now on. CR Pack, Constitutional Rights Pack. Car Pack. Car Pack Carter. And uh, I'm sitting out on my front porch. Some of you who follow me regularly recognize it. And uh, it is April 5th. <laughs> this, is, this is not supposed to be April 5th garb. Okay? But it is, it is honestly odd. It is, that, it is that cold out here that I have my... Uh, hat on and, and my uh, combat coat, my special glass. I love these glasses because they are mitten gloves, which actually keep your fingers warmer. But that's not why I'm doing this, this, uh, this post today. The fact is, I want to talk to you for just a second about um, DEI, DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion that I want to be clear, that is nothing more than a cruel, sinister, and sick device created by the ruling elite to divide the working people. That's it, the common folks, the people who live on this street right here, okay? Lower middle income neighborhood, I love it, I love it. My wife and I chose to live here love our neighbors, every one of them, because they're real people. They're real working. They are not part of the wealthy ruling elite, the wealthy and political ruling elite, who created DEI to keep the races at each other's throat, throats. That's, a, that's the whole purpose of it. Because if they can divide the wealthy and political elite, the ruling elite, they can conquer, which is what they do, okay? Just, just keep the peonage hating each other, and then they can't fight against us when we impose every oppressive um, means we can against them, okay? Everyone, take away their freedom, take away their rights, pay them pittance, work in, in our slave factories and slave stores. Uh, yeah, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. My, my wife, little Latina girl, Honduran, works in a, uh, a, a store here, makes, I think, uh, $13 an hour. How in the hell, you know, she doesn't have to worry about income, of course, but how in the hell are people who work there, fellow workers, supposed to pay their way in life on those kind of pittance wages. How about Walmart? Walmart, maybe, well, sometimes they'll pay as much as 15 an hour. Some might say 17, I don't know. But uh, um, every member of the Walmart family is a billionaire. How in the hell do they look at themselves in the mirror when they do not pay their workers enough? Do not pay their workers enough for their workers to pay their way in life. Okay, and they know these workers are going to end up taking some sort of welfare for handouts from government. And that's the way they want it because they want the people to be oppressed. They want them to be dependent and oppressed. And they want them to be at each other's throats, vying for the pittance. Vying for the pittance. How do I know it's chick trickery, chicanery? Well, on this street, we have blacks, whites, and Latinos, and Asians, all. We're all together here. It's our own little melting pot. And we get along just fine. We're not at each other's throats. I don't hear anybody on this street talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. They're out making their own living and getting along with each other and taking care of each other. I'll give you an example. Now at the end of the block, on the other side, there, the, the, there are some homes here that are owned by the people who live in them. Nothing fancy, nothing fancy like my own home here. But uh, there are rental, rentals down the block there. They look a lot like the old row homes when I was a kid in Baltimore City. I grew up in the inner city. Um, and one day I noticed a Latina woman out there trying to start her car. Old, old um, uh, SUV. 
one store. So I walked in and said, ma'am, you, you got a problem? She says, no hablo, no hablo. I said, uh, tu tienes una problema uh, con el coche? I know it's not good Spanish, but it's the best I can do. She said, yeah. And then her daughter came out and she spoke very broken English and said, uh, we can't get into the store. I said, well, let me, let, me, let me try and give you a jump car. So I came up and got my old car. My old car over there sitting across the street. Yeah, that, that's a 2004 Jeep, 260,000 miles on it. Wouldn't have it any other way. Um, and I went down, turned it around, it's a one-way street here, pulled it up in front of hers and trying to start it. And the door in the cross street, big, big Leo stepped out. He's black, big guy, big guy. It was a bricklayer, bricklayer. Craftsman, and he said, uh, "God, what you doing over there?" Now he didn't say, "I don't want to talk to Carter because he's white," and I believe in DEI. Okay, and he discriminated against us and made us slaves. Blah blah blah. He just, "God, what you doing over there?" I said, uh, "Leo, I'm trying to trying to help this lady start her car." and, and uh, you know, give it a jump start. He didn't then at that point say, I don't want to help her, she a uh, she, uh, uh, Hispanic. And she didn't say, no me gusta porque es negro. No, no, none of that. The elite would like us to do that. That's why they get this DEI to keep us at each other's throats. Uh, he said, uh, Carter, uh, you ain't gonna accomplish nothing there with those little, <laughs> Those little toy cables you use, and I'll admit they were dollar store cables. He said, uh, "Hold on there, let me get let me get something, do it right." And he went back in the back, and he had yeah, got went to his pickup truck. He came around with a pair of cables, looked like they could jump sort of diesel, jump sort of a, a train engine. Okay, huge. <laughs> And he went to work for. Us. So the, you see the point I'm making here. We can get along with each other. Well, we'll get along fine. If we can stop the power elite, the wealthy political power elite from keeping us at each other's throats. So that's our goal. Let's teach those damn people a lesson, what do you say?